saying that what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Indeed, the board that exists today is very different than the board that existed under our former leadership. The current board is focused on doing what is best for the animals and the long-term good of the society. I will outline for you several of the initiatives that we have implemented in recent months to address specific issues that were raised around the time of the AGM and to help build a stronger foundation for an improved SPCA in Nova Scotia. In response to complaints about the secrecy of our board meetings, we now post minutes of board meetings online on our website following board approval. We also produce a quarterly newsletter that includes a board notebook feature summarizing the major activities of the board over the past quarter. In response to complaints that the board was not in touch with the concerns of our society's members or the general public, we have published the names of board members on our website, provided instruction for how to contact us, and implemented a policy that we will respond to any messages within two weeks. Members of the executive, including myself, and committee chairs have been tasked with responding to correspondence. In addition, in my role as secretary, I keep a communication log that tracks the number of concerns and inquiries we receive about various issues. I provide this log to the full board on a monthly basis. Further, we have now posted our position statements on our website, so members of the public can have access to our stances on various issues. At the time of the AGM, several board positions were vacant, most notably the secretary and vice president positions. The secretary position was filled by me, and our recruitment campaign took place in August to fill the newly vacated president position and the available director, director at large. Since then, six new directors at large have been selected. The search continues for president and vice president and the position managers are posted on our website. In response to concerns that complaints about the board were not being dealt with in a timely or fair manner, we implemented a new code of conduct for board members and staff, appointed Petra as compliance officer, and approved the formation of a compliance and ethics committee that Petra chairs to review and investigate complaints about the conduct of the board. Regarding concerns that the board spends too much time on the Metro Shelter, and concerns that the president of the board of directors was also, also the director of the Metro Shelter, the position of shelter director was eliminated upon the resignation of M. Ketty, and a new shelter management team was formed to provide strategic guidance and oversight for the Metro Shelter and to allow the board to focus more on provincial matters. A 2005 HRM Commission report that was publicly released in 2008 indicated that the Metro Shelter's facility is not sufficient for the needs of our animals. In response, a capital campaign committee has been formed, chaired by Jim Kochanov, our treasurer, to conduct research on a new facility and to raise the required funds. We encourage anyone interested in this to get involved by joining this committee. The fact that the organization does not have a paid executive director or CEO has also been identified as an issue. In response, the board has been developing a job description for an executive director, recognizing the benefits that such a position would have for the operations of the society. Following the AGM, we lost our fundraising chair, and there was concern that the board was not spending time developing a coordinated approach to fundraising and donations. We have now hired a full-time fund development officer to coordinate fundraising efforts and improve donor relations. Public and media relations, specifically regarding the handling of cases such as Celtic cuts, has been lacking, with members feeling frustrated by lack of information or inconsistent information communicated by the society. In response, we have now formed a public relations committee, appointed new media spokespeople in lieu of a president, and are recruiting for a volunteer public relations director provide further guidance and support to the society in this area. We are also arranging to meet with the Crown Attorney's Office to clarify what information can be shared with the public after charges have been laid in cruelty cases. Lastly, in the months leading up to the AGM, the Board revoked the membership of five individuals who had previously been supporters of the SPCA. We hereby announce that the Board has reinstated those memberships. We wish to express our regret for the incident, and offer our apologies to the individuals involved, including Janet Shernan, Joe Murray, Joanne Shaw, and Joan Simpson. We also wish to publicly state that we recognize that Joan Simpson's dog Jack was legally adopted from the Animal Rescue Coalition. We look forward to working with these members in furthering the important work of the SPCA. In addition, we have proposed a revision to our policy that will require the board to notify people if their membership is being reviewed 
and invite them to appear before the board to present their side of the case. In closing, I want to stress that the SPCA and the animals in our care depend on the support and encouragement of the public. While the Board of Directors is working hard to create a solid base for the society, it is through the generosity of our donors, the dedication of our staff, the enthusiasm of our volunteers, and the compassion of our adopters that the society will truly reach new life. We encourage all those interested in animal welfare in Nova Scotia to contact the Provincial Society or their local SPCA branch to find out how they can get involved. We hope that we will see many new faces and our longtime supporters at the fifth annual Cause for Cause dinner and auction happening November 1st. Cause for Cause is the Provincial Society's most important annual fundraising event, and we encourage supporters of the SPCA's mandate to lend their voice to the battle against animal cruelty by supporting Cause for Cause. Thank you, and we will now open the floor to questions.